Good morning. This is Pastor John Bean, and we welcome you to worship with with Laos Lutheran Church this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter. We are glad to have Jeff playing for us again and Christine Willie recording our worship. We thank uh, you for your participation online as well. Uh, just a couple of announcements. I do want to mention that. And thank you for those, thanks to those who are sending offerings. We know everyone is un, not able to do that, but we do appreciate those who are. But uh, just, just know that your offerings keep our ministry going. And also, uh, we have sent out newsletters to the congregation, and uh, hope you will you either have received it or will be receiving it soon. We will continue our worship this morning with a prayer of confession. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are dead to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the heart you have made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of the life of them, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Have No Fear, Little Flock, uh, in the Lutheran Book of Worship, number 476. <laughs> This is the word of our Lord. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 23. And sometimes this Sunday in the season of Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. So you will see a theme about uh, shepherding and shepherds in our psalm and in our gospel lesson. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in my paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 10th chapter. And Jesus said, and Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief. And the bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd and the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. But they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of our Lord. The noted professor and preacher, the late Peter Gomes, he was known for his eloquence in the pulpit. And his eloquence was on full display in just two words. And that's the thing about eloquence. Sometimes it doesn't need a lot of words. In this case, it didn't. Now, when someone asked Reverend Gomes how he was doing, he didn't give the usual replies, I'm doing well, or I'm okay. No, he would tell that person, I flourish. I flourish. When we hear the words of the 23rd Psalm, we might flash back to a funeral. That psalm is indeed one of the most famous passages of Holy Scripture partly because it is read at so many funerals. Due to this, the 23rd Psalm has become associated with death and with dying. And that's a shame because these famous words of Scripture, while they do offer us great comfort in times of mourning and grief, they are not so much about dying, really. They're more about living and flourishing. There is some beautiful imagery we find in this song. Green pastures, still fresh water, fragrant oil, a table full of food, and overflowing cup. These are images we could say of flourishing, of living. The normal actions of life, eating and drinking, seeking safety and security and shelter. These are the acts of living. And they are set by the writer of this psalm in the context of a life lived with God. These natural and normal activities, 
They become something greater in the 23rd Psalm. They become acts of faith and trust in God. These normal human actions of flourishing and living, they become acts of faith and trust because of what the rest of the psalm pictures. The darkest valley, the presence of evil and of enemies. We ordinarily think that if things are bad, we have a hard time living, much less flourishing. If we consider what we are dealing with now, a viral pandemic, we might question whether we are flourishing or not. And we know indeed some people are dealing with difficult times. But even for those who aren't dealing with great financial or material difficulties, there are those worries about leaving the house or going to the grocery store and of course having a difficult time finding some of the things that were once so abundant, including toilet paper and paper towels. We are concerned about those who fear losing their jobs, their businesses, and as a result, their homes. There may be some of you indeed who are concerned about making ends meet. How can we flourish in the midst of this? The writer of the 23rd Psalm tells us how we can flourish no matter what. We have a shepherd, a shepherd who uses his rod and staff not simply to defend the sheep, but also to guide the sheep and to comfort the sheep, comfort us, the shepherd's flock. Our shepherd will not head for the hills at the first sign of danger, will not simply look out for himself, but will actually lay down his life for the sheep. The shepherd will guard us from thieves who seek to do us harm, will lead and guide us through dangerous places, will even provide for us when surrounded by enemies. The great reformer Martin Luther was certainly a man who enjoyed life. He enjoyed eating and drinking and singing and being with family and friends. The image of a table set by God would have appealed to Luther. So would that of the overflowing cup especially since Luther enjoyed his beer and wine. But Luther knew that part of living, even part of flourishing, meant facing tough and trying times, and he knew this from personal experience, as he faced down many enemies and many other difficult situations. Luther saw in that 23rd Psalm a portrait of a God who provides for our needs but also gives us comfort in all temptations, assaults, distress, and afflictions. Our shepherd helps us flourish in times of plenty and scarcity, times of peace and violence, times of wellness and illness. Our shepherd, as Luther said, protects us with a fierce tenderness. Our shepherd will lay down his life for us, and is worthy of trust. Jesus, our good shepherd, did just that, laying down his life on the cross. In the second chapter of Acts, we find a story of how God's people flourish. It isn't in hoarding, or binging, or hiding, or throwing up our hands in despair. Rather, we flourish when we make certain that things we have, the things we might have in plenty, are shared with others who don't have enough. We can share from our overflowing cup at times with others, even in this situation. It means also giving thanks for the bread we have, for the friends and family with whom we are able to gather. It means having glad and generous hearts and praising God even when life is difficult, even in the middle of the darkest valley or the current pandemic. It means having the goodwill of others when our instincts might tell us to simply look out for ourselves. It means trusting in God's promises and being an example of living in trust and hope 
especially in times like these. It means remembering, too, as Jesus tells us in our gospel this morning, that he came that we might have life and have it abundantly, have an abundant life. And Jesus says this knowing that there are going to be times when his disciples will face persecution and affliction and even the everyday trials and tribulations of life. And yet Jesus says, nevertheless, I've come to give you an abundant life. It may not be the life you see in advertising currently, where at least before all of this occurred, people were just out having a great time in so many ads until the ads caught on to the reality. But it means having an abundant life even in the midst of a time when we see need around us and difficulties around us and illness around us. No, when we trust in God, when we trust in Jesus, the Good Shepherd, we can truly flourish. We can also help others flourish as well, and that's what the abundant life is about. Our hymn is Lutheran Book of Worship 456, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Christ, our Lord. 
our Lord and Savior. Amen. I would invite you to join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now in the words of Hebrews chapter 13, I offer you this blessing. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, and working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lutheran Book of Worship 352.